Okay, so for this part of the operation, I'm going to show you how to download uh, TrueNAS and create a bootable USB. Okay, so if you go to TrueNAS homepage, uh, yeah, welcome to TrueNAS, TrueNAS homepage. Uh, it, gives you, it takes you to the homepage. Okay, so we've got, they give you three choices. My recommendation, if you're going to run a virtualized operating system, which I am, so I'm going to be running uh, Linux Mint, um, I'd recommend actually TrueNAS Scale. It has done the best for me. So let's get that downloaded. Oh, we'll ask for your email. I've already signed up. And yeah, TrueNAS, let's do it. Now, while it's doing that, what we need to do is, well, I'm going to download. So I'm going to go Linux Mint because I'm going to use that as my virtual operating system. And there's a two-fold reason why we're going to do this. So we've got the sleek, modern version. I'm going to go for the standard version. If you want to, there is a light version. Uh, yeah, sometimes it can be a little bit buggy for a virtualization machine. I'm not really interested in spending a lot of time maintaining the operating system. So I'll choose the uh, stable. Okay. All right, that will work. Now, for the installation guide, this is actually very important. We want to create a bootable media. So it gives you a couple of choices here. So if we go back... Um, yeah, so when you're on the Linux home of the download page, just go to installation guide and create a bootable media. And it gives you your three choices. The one that I used, it's just out of habit. Click that. And you can download that. And the reason why we want this, we want this to actually create the um, flash. So we're gonna, we're gonna create a bootable USB for this, but not for that, because that we'll leave that as it is and I'll show you how to install that going forward. So we're just gonna wait for this to be done. Now I've already got it installed on my computer. Yeah, I'm just gonna use that USB stick. Oops. Yeah, so once that's done downloading, yeah, then I'll do the installation. Okay, so we can see that it's downloaded. Excellent, let's go to our etcher select from file. Let's go TrueNAS. And you can check the date. Hey, it's second today open. And that's just all it is. It is free software. Uh, I think you can pay for a full version, um, but yeah, you're gonna have to put up with some ads. All right, one successful flash and by that. Oops, uh, let's have a look at our download. And we've got the Linux Mint. We'll keep that as it is. We'll save that for uh, much later. Uh, to remove the USB, boom. No, we definitely don't wanna move any of that. Just the USB, thank you. Save to remove, thank you very much. All right, so here's a dramatic reenactment. So once we've done that, we go to the back of the PC where our true NAS scale software actually is. We go to our actual build and we plug it in the back somewhere, nice and reliable. So yeah, just to the back of the motherboard. And then we turn it on. Oh wow, look at that, lights up. RGB, really cool on a server, right? Yeah, no. Alrighty, before we install TrueNAS, let's just take a quick look at some of our BIOS settings. All right, 10 gigabit um, network card confirmed. My two M.2 drives. Yes, we definitely don't want that on. Good, man's power manager. Yes, we do actually want this to run yeah, relatively efficient as possible, so not going for high settings, um, energy efficient. I will be testing um, total power draw at idle from the PowerPoint. Numa, non-unified memory access, that's enabled. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna go against my better judgment and I'm gonna go auto. The reason why is because I do hope that it will um, have some power saving. At least that's fine. Uh, worry about that now. Virtualization, yes, thank you. That would be very helpful. Ah, these are my two, uh, oh, four, sorry, four SSDs. So they're confirmed, they're seen it, motherboard seen it, and these are my six um, mechanical hard drives. Uh, only other thing I could think of would be cr critical is, uh, yeah, check secure boot. So we do not want that on there because we're not running Windows. And boot option. And that's where our, OS is stored, so 
Oh, don't worry about that. Alright, now that the bias is good, let's get to booting. Save change and exit, let's go. Excellent. Yeah, this is the start of the process. And yep, we're going straight to number one install. Uh, first thing, what, we have to choose a drive for our OS to install, and uh, the obvious choice would be the 250 gig M.2. Oops. Um, if you wanted to, although I don't have it, um, you can actually install it on two drives, but we won't be doing that. So we'll just go for the first one. Don't actually know what that means. It's, they're actually four terabyte drives, so whatever going on there. All right. And these these are the drives that I've tested in the past just to so that's why you get some of that in so this is in a different um, motherboard different system all right let's go and we go something simple please don't jump okay um no let's go all the way performance only Okay, that was straightforward enough, and that's the installation. So once you plug your USB port in, um, basically that's all you have to do if you want to emulate what I'm doing. I'm going to momentarily um, sh shut down, and I'll reboot from the 250 gigabyte M.2. What we're doing here is just making sure that it boots off the right drive. And it looks like it's already done that for us. 250 gig, thank you very much. All right, once you get to this stage, you actually no longer need to do anything with the current system. So what you're going to want to do is take a photo and particularly make sure you clearly get all the information of the web user interface at, because that's how you're going to log into the machine. And you're going to, it's going to give you the first, your first line of the HTTP, and it's going to give you a series of numbers. That's exactly what you want to type into your, in your internet browser. That's the very first thing you're going to want to type in. And that will get you to the nice boot menu, which we're about to discover right now. All right, with the successful installation of TrueNAS and our careful recording of the web interface, we're now going to log in. And some web browsers with the non-secure will give you a warning. Um, obviously Opera does not, so it just took me straight to the menu. And now we're gonna log in as root and the password that we set. All right, first thing you probably want to do before you do anything is check for updates. No updates available, boom, we have the latest version, good job. And hottest core 36. This is actually winter and the heater is on in the house, but anyway, let's get creating. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, once you're happy with the dashboard, go storage, and we're going to want to create our pools. Uh, as you can see, we've got all our available hard drives. Ah, so the hard drives that we have um, advertised as four, the reason why, it's just a different way of measuring, and uh, this is the true storage that we have, rather than the market gimmick um, of four terabytes. It's not actually true four terabytes, the ones that you buy from the shops. I had to look that up on Google. Uh, anyway, not to worry, but you also notice that these aren't exactly 500 gigs either, so yeah, it is what it is. All right, let's create our first pool. Now, the first one I want to do is a works pool. And this will involve the four SSDs. And okay, we're gonna to want to choose our RAID. We could go RAID zero, but as you can see, highly discouraged. And for this one, because I am the actual IT person, um, Mirror is probably most reliable, but you do waste half your space. But we're gonna go RAID one, or RAID Z as I call it here. Did I call it? Yeah. Right. And this will be our works pool. So I'm gonna be doing the video editing off the actual server itself. And this allows me to access the same data from multiple machines. And with RAID 1, or RAID Z, sorry, um, we have three working drives and one redundant. And that's how it's going to divide up the data. So if one fails, I still have, um, I'll still have my data. And it might be a good idea in this instance to have a couple of cold storage. So maybe either one SSD and one mechanical hard drive, if that's what you want to do, or risk it up to you. But that's how we're going to do it. And this will be our raw capacity. Uh, what are we going to name it? It's kind of inelegant. Bridget Smith works. Yeah, that'll do. And... Let's go there. May take a little while. Okay, excellent. Now that that's done, we're going to create our mass storage. So we're just going to create another pool. Uh, 
and this will be i'm saving this one for the os and i'll do that in an actual separate video i won't go through that part here because we'll just get the basics of the system working and we're just going to choose all our six drives Now here's something to bake your noodle. We know that um, adding RAID 0 is very risky, for example. So if you have one hard drive, then you add another hard drive and you decide to run it in a Stripe or RAID 0, um, you're increasing the risk of failure by 100%. Now, this is going to bake your noodle. Which one is more reliable, having a single drive or all of these, but with a RAID and support? Let me know in the comments. We'll click here. RAID 1. And we're going to call this. There we go. I think that'll be fine. And I'm not going to write out encryption. Uh, so if we went RAID 0... I will increase, but yeah, the chances of failure is very great when you have hard drives in this configuration. All right, I'm pretty much happy with that. This might take a little bit longer. Okay, apparently not. Before I do anything else, is turn off compression because this is essentially a... Um... Ah, yes. That's actually important. Um, I don't need to do that for the mechanical, but for the... Cool options. Enable auto trigger. Because it's um, SSD, it doesn't have a automatic uh, delete when you, oh, you can't just simply write over the last information. So uh, we have to delete the old stuff. And when running RAID 0, it doesn't uh, necessarily work. So instead of having lots of junk and filling up the hard drives, this will trim all the um, mark for deletion files. Not the best explanation, but anyway. Ah, yes, here we go. And yeah, we're definitely going off for that. Save, I think I should have done that in the, and we're gonna do the same thing here. Pressure level off. Ah, yes, and because I'm running videos, apparently there is an advantage I'm having the record size at one meg. Yeah, I'll do the same for this one. Boom, that should be. All right, happy with that. Now let's create our data sheet. This is where we'll actually be. Um, so basically our data sheet, that's actually what um, we're going to store all the data on and that's what we're going to be working off. So uh, for this one, you can actually make a partition if you want to, but add data sheet, yeah. So that's the reason why we need to make that critical. And that just gives you your, um, well, basically your writing space. All right, we're just going to call it. Um... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll do. And we're going to do this one for our works, add data sheet. in works I could have, uh, anyway not important okay make sure compression's off uh, yeah that's good enough all right excellent all right next we've got to create uh, oh wow all right now I'm just gonna call it works Okay, it looks like I'll need to sort that out a little bit more. And we're going to add another one. Okay, that one was better. Let's see if we can fix if there's any problems here. Looks like there's going to be no conflict. Hopefully that doesn't annoy me a little bit later. All right, let's just have a quick look. Uh, this PC, no, we want to go straight to... All right, there's our true NAS. Pass ah, I won't be able to enter. All right, so we can see it, but we need to create a credential. Local user, and that's going to be me. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add a new one. Full name. Um, cool, John's new. Definitely not, we're going. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, you guys won't be here for the rest of this because I need to type in sensitive information. But we'll be back after. All I'm doing is I'm typing in my password, email, and I don't need to do anything else. So I'll see you after I finish this. All right, now that I've created a permission, Let's go back to our storage and we're going to view permission. As you can see, it's in brute. So I don't want that. I want to be able to access it via another machine. So we're going to edit it here and let's see if my 
Oh, there we go. Pro Smith. Pro Smith. Yes, yes. And I do also want the group. Eh, should be fine. Boom, let's see if we can access our true NAS. Oh, it would prompt you for a password, but I've already uh, got through the process. So go from here, you'd actually type in a password and remember the password that you um, first, oh, that you would have um, just done with your credentials. And we'll get a new paste folder. Oh, I don't have permission. Okay. Did I forget to save it? No, that should be perfectly fine. Oops, I didn't save this one. I didn't do this one. All right. All right, let's try that again. There we go. All right, now I can have clearly have access to the drives um, if you want to. I'm not sure if you'd... Um, oh, yeah, you can map it here if you wanted to. Map network drive. Let's see if we can go... Uh -huh. And you know what? True NAS, I may want to put that next to my others. Let's see if we'll create a short... Ah, very nice. And that's basically all it is. So well, hopefully you're able to follow along. I'm going to leave a link in the description of somebody who has done this obviously a few more times than me um they did it very clear so if you had a little bit of trouble following along i do look in the link and there's going to be a video of somebody done a very good job but this is basically the simple um finish to this and i'm actually pretty happy with this so if you like the video please um hit like and subscribe for more video content like this um yeah this is what i'm basically going to build this channel on and i think with the amount of um hard drive space that we have um i don't think i'm going to run out of storage anytime soon so thank you very much peace Here's something to consider when making your purchasing decision. So this is the dual E5 2680V3 and it has an idle power of uh, 70, oh you're looking at it, let's call it maybe an average of 80 watts. Whereas you have that my 10400 has an idle power of about, mm, let's average it at, well 27 watts, let's go there. So it is something to take into account. This system is using more than double the power, so... I mean, yeah. And these hard drives are in idle state, so just something to consider. Well, now that I've done that, the system is working well. It's all together, and... Well, I was able to pull the graphics card out of that, because it won't be utilised, so we don't need that. And... Yeah, I guess it's time for the... Rev nice peel. Oh, the peel's still on there. I guess be quiet, I don't find your cases appealing.